Thank you, Michael. So it is a joint work with these amazing researchers, and I would also like to thank the people who helped with obtaining some materials for this presentation. The recent DARPA Cyber Grant Challenge was a historic event that brought together the researchers for, from security and automated reasoning communities. It was a great excitement and synergy. It has expressed loudly the tremendous interest in uh, the power of automated techniques for security analysis. But what has elevated this level of the interest? The next 20 minutes will be a journey into how automated techniques are revolutionizing the way we ensure security and safety of the software. So, oh, sorry, it's not working. So what are the challenges in software security that make it rely so extensively on automated reasoning? Real-world software systems are increasingly large and complex. On this slide, we see how popular software systems were expanding in terms of the lines of the code as newer versions were developed. We are talking about the millions of lines of code. Let's track the progress of development of various operating systems we already had five million lines of the code in the 90s, which gradually grew into 10, 25, and 50 million lines of the code. And that's within past two decades. Then we have a Google with all internet services, which comprises two billions of lines of the code. And yet, that's not the edge. There is a human genome project which hits 3,300 billions of lines of the code. So how do we analyze such large software systems effectively for security critical bugs and in a limited time frame? So when you're facing a massive labyrinth, what do you do? Do you dive in directly? Good luck with that. Or Will you be smarter and try to assess the situation first? Perhaps by climbing up the wall and trying to gather as much information as you can. So that would be a good start. But analyzing software systems by hand and generating exploits manually require a developer to process and reason about massive amount of data. So clearly, with only a manual effort, it won't be possible. And the automation of the analysis is an increasing need. So what are the challenges that the automated reasoning community has to face and overcome to answer the call? Clearly, there are inherited challenges that the scalability of today's software and their complex nature, but there are challenges beyond that. In order to use a computer for solving a problem, we need to translate this problem into some form that a computer will be able to understand and handle. This is what we are calling a formalization of the problem. In fact, formalizing security properties is even more difficult. Constructing formalization is a multifaceted task that includes various aspects. We need to consider how are we going to reason about the formalization once it is constructed. Also, how closely can we abstract the formalization from the domain of the problem, and how much of this process can we automate? Yet, that's not all. There are some problems for which there exists no algorithm that can answer yes or no for all possible inputs to this problem. So these problems are well known in computer, security, computer science and are called undecidable problems. So what if our formalization leads to an undecidable problem? 
Can we still tackle it? And what would be our best attempt towards that? So what are the directions that are being explored by the automated reasoning community to answer the call? Verification of the software has evolved in a very, into a very wide area of research. In fact, being able to perform a verification is changing our classical understanding of the life cycle of the software development. Verification would group up with testing and constitute what we would call the analysis step. And we want to automate testing and verification, but ideally, we also want to be able to produce fixes automatically for the bugs after they are detected. Moreover, at the, well, in fact, this sub-cycle is a labyrinth by itself where you can keep looping without ever being able to find your way through. Moreover, you can consider at the design and development stages, what is the current progress in automated techniques? This could benefit with being able to utilize these techniques more efficiently. So verification research is incorporating manual and automated analysis at different levels. Analysis can be performed in binary code level, byte code, or source code. And most state-of-the-art approaches are implementing some combinations of program testing and program analysis. So in program testing, we aim to find the bugs by generating program inputs then executing the programs over them and analyzing the output. If an invalid behavior of the program is observed, then a bug is detected. But that's not all yet. We need to make sure this bug is security critical bug. For this, an analyst has to check if an exploit can be generated for bug. So how much of this process can, you, can we automate? Can we automate bug detection? and exploit generation. So for some classes of bugs, this effort has been evolving from manual process to increasingly automated. And there is a program analysis approach where techniques vary based on whether they require the execution of the program or not. If they do, then we get dynamic analysis tools where we are observing actual execution of the program in real time. And these involve input synthesis and test generation. If we do not require the execution of the program, we get into static analysis. So in static analysis, we aim to analyze program content, either on executable level or on the source code level, in order to infer program properties. So these include code inspection, symbolic execution, model checking, abstract interpretation. In fact, static analysis gives the largest area for automation opportunities. One of the basic techniques that became a fundamental tool in static analysis is symbolic execution. The past decade in the past decade, we've seen the development of a number of successful approaches in symbolic execution, which rely on the symbolic methods to translate security questions about programs into constraint satisfaction problems in some formal logic. So these formalizations allow us to leverage recent advances in formal methods. Specialized reasoners for expressive logics, both decidable and undecidable, have emerged and showed themselves to be powerful in practice. Solutions produced by such dedicated reasoners are then used to automatically construct security exploits and suggest possible fixes. So when we are making decisions which logics to use, what shall we consider? So analysis is done at three levels of the code, the binary code, 
bytecode, source code, and each of these levels have their advantages and might be more suitable for one problem or another based on what we are addressing. Sometimes we might be able to use our preferred analysis level, and sometimes we may not have that much of a choice because we have to work on what is available. But analysis on the source code level is the ideal one because it allows to catch the bugs at the very beginning. So analysis on binary code and byte code are often reduced to satisfiability problems for Boolean and machine integer or bit vector constraints. These constraints are then handled efficiently with specialized solvers. But what about the source code? Analysis at the source code level is more challenging. It involves reasoning on the richer data types and control structures. So let's consider an example. Let's say we have one arithmetic constraint, a single arithmetic constraint. And we want to translate it directly to Boolean constraints and solve it. So this is what we have. Can you answer if this is satisfiable? I can give you a hint. The constraint contains only two variables, and both of them are of four-bit lengths. Does it help? Well, what if we try to reduce this constraint to Boolean constraints through intermediate bit vector constraint translation. Those who are familiar with working with bit vectors, can you tell me what is this constraint about? Or even more, can you say if this is satisfiable? So what if we try to look at the constraint in the original arithmetic domain? In fact, the constraint that we've been translating in different abstractions is nothing else but saying that A times B is not equal to B times A. Is this satisfiable? Of course not. Plus, it's not satisfiable for any values of A and B. We don't have any more any bound, like for bit lengths. And even if a bit vector reduction or a set reduction would say, well, it is unsatisfiable. It would be unsatisfiable for the bound of the length, and we wouldn't know the general answer. So it is hard to reason at lower abstraction levels for us, and so it is hard for automated tools. So when we are talking about source code analysis, reductions to Boolean and bit vector constraints is possible, but it's not a natural choice, particularly because such reductions explode in size and obscure the original structure of the problem. So when we want to lift up the abstraction, we need to think of how are we going to reason about it and how do we automate this? So what has given the rise to the current boost of enthusiasm in automated reasoning for security. So there is a subfield of automated reasoning called satisfiability modular series that is specifically dedicated to handling constraints over different data types and their combinations. This is a typical formula that we can see in SMT. We see three different domains of variables, booleans, integers, arrays, and the constraint is a mixture of those. So satisfiability modular series solvers incorporate in a principal way boolean solvers and constraint solvers on the domains of interest. And the goal is to manage to get either yes from or both of the solvers and in that case, the original input would be satisfiable, or if the Boolean solver returns no, then it is unsatisfiable. So SMT solvers offer the power, speed, and scalability of 
state-of-the-art Boolean solvers, and expressive power, flexibility of automated theorem provers for richer logics. So over the past decade, SMT has revolutionized automated reasoning and various disciplines that has to come to rely on it. It has expressed a superior performance and abstraction level compared to other automated theorem proving approaches. As a consequence, it has established itself as a natural choice for the back end for logic-based analysis. But earlier uses of SMT was treating SMT solvers as black boxes and mainly were focused on symbolic execution tools. Moreover, the problems they focused on were Boolean and bit vector constraint problems. So with the goal to overcome these limitations intrinsic by that, such approaches, we looked into how to deploy the full power of SMT solving in security analysis. So what exactly we focused on? Usually program inputs, especially in web and applications, are character strings. And these strings are processed by input validation and sanitization codes that use string manipulating functions. But most of the common vulnerabilities here are caused exactly because of the improper handling of strings in the input validation and sanitization code. So it is crucial to be able to reason efficiently on constraints over string variables and operators. So this is exactly what we focused on. We developed specialized procedures to reason about strings, regular expressions, common string manipulating functions with the focus on having other data types in the constraint as well, like integers, arrays, and tuples. So to give the flavor of what kind of problems we were facing here, I need to say that reasoning only about the strings alone is already a very difficult problem. In fact, any reasoning, reasonable fragment of string theory is undecidable. But we still focused on identifying fragments that would be suitable for automated analysis. More crucially, we wanted to develop efficient solvers for them. So we wanted to build a string solver that would be possible to be incorporated into an SMT solver. So we integrated our string solver into CVC4, which is an open source, widely used SMT solver. And this way, we expanded already large set of data types that are built in in CVC4 and supported. This made CVC4 the first SMT solver that is capable to handle mixed constraints over strings, integers, reals, bit vectors, arrays, and algebraic data types. So this way, we added new SMT reasoning capabilities to CVC4 to support security analysis. We did this with the input and feedback from security experts at Carnegie Mellon University. These are also people who stand behind Mayhem, the systems that won DARPA Cyber Grand Challenge, and CVC4 is used at CMU for the analysis of string processing programs in Python. Several other users worldwide are using the tool for various security and safety analysis of string manipulating programs. Let's have a look at this small example. So it is a C++ code that does password verification. So here we have the input sanitization block. Then we have a block that does password verification and the block that grants the permission of the root. 
If you have a closer look at this code, you see that there might be a possible buffer overflow vulnerability. Because we're using unsafe gets function, and plus, if this tech is growing downwards, then we are in trouble. So we would want to translate this problem into SMT instance and check if CVC4 would be able to detect it. So the part with memory allocation is encoded by saying that input is a concatenation of the buffer, then memory where the pass variable is allocated, and the possible tail. Then the actual sanitization code is encoded as a regular expression, and the password verification part. But now we need to add a constraint, which basically will say that is it possible that buffer does not equal to ABC123, but we still grant the access. So we run CVC4 on this example and ask it to provide a solution if there is one. So we use this dump models option, and it's pretty fast. And it returns a string, which is 15 consecutive A's in the input, followed by the letter Y, which is setting the pass variable to Y, and thus is allowing us to pass the um, important part of the code. So what if we change this code, and instead of password, we'll try to verify the username? So if you take on a closer look at the sanitization block of the code, you will see that actual, actually some meta characters are leaking through because they are allowed in the range. And that is because of the bug that the hyphen has to be escaped. So in fact, here we have a possibility of injection attack if the input string is containing some dangerous script with meta characters. So can we detect this with CVC4? So we will update our translation, which will be very small update that says that buff is um, compared to admin. And we need to change the final condition that we request. Basically, we say that is it possible that after sanitization is done that the input contains meta characters? So if we execute it, we'll see that CVC4 does return a solution again. And this solution does contain the meta character. So SMT is very efficient, and it is used in all the three winner systems of DARPA Cyber Grand Challenge. But we want to do more. So what would be the future of the SMT in security analysis? So currently, the most trending approach is Concolix execution technique, which is a hybrid of static and dynamic analysis. It combines randomized concrete execution, symbolic execution, and automated constraint solving, with the goal to identify and encode only relevant portions of a program at a time. So this approach seems to be very promising and it might be crucial for wider adoption of logic-based security analysis. Well, we can also use SMT solvers less as a black box and more as tools that also guide the search during the analysis, because SMT solvers have very strong search engines. And also, the key to the efficiency of SMT solvers and its potential is in the implementation of more higher level specialized subsolvers that can handle specific data types. So research on developing such extensions to SMT is usually triggered by real life applications as it was in the case of the strings. And once the higher level of abstraction of uh, high level um, types are supported, this allows us to get higher level of abstraction in security analysis as well. 
getting closer or even higher level of abstraction as we had in the source code. So this permits automated discovery of classes of vulnerabilities that are currently out of the scope of automated exploit generation tools. So this is an actual life cycle of expansion of SMT solvers. And like we saw, we may end up dealing with reasoning over undecidable problems. So we have witnessed that SMT solvers are opening new paths for exploration in security analysis. And we are looking forward with great enthusiasm for future endeavors. Thank you.